Welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 198. My father used to say, if your life is free of failures, you're not taking enough risks. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Have you turned your key and heard that dreaded tick, 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 tick because of a dead battery? No worries. I've got the NOCO Genius Boost Jump Starter. This compact tool fits in your glove box and features rechargeable lithium battery technology that will start a dead battery in your car, boat, truck, or RV. It packs a whopping 12-volt, 400-amp starting power and can start up to 20 dead batteries on a single charge. Plus, it has built-in spark-proof technology with reverse polarity protection to safely jumpstart your vehicle. The compact, ergonomically designed clamps are solid copper for maximum conductivity, and there's a built-in ultra-bright dual LED flashlight with seven modes, including an SOS emergency strobe. It's easily rechargeable with a USB outlet, and you can charge your smartphone or tablet while you're on the road. Works on any 12-volt lead-acid battery. The Genius Boost from NOCO is the ultimate emergency tool that's safe and easy to use. Quality design, state-of-the-art technology from NOCO, your battery care source since 1914. Get yours at GeniusChargers.com. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. Today, I am so excited to introduce a very special guest, Holly Martin. Holly, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm always buckled up and ready for a fun ride, Mark. All right. It is great to have you here. Holly Martin of Metal and Speed is a photographer who specializes in innovative automotive and mechanical photography. Her passion for automobiles, metalwork, and the mechanical arts is captured in her photography. She's also an artist with a background in painting and mixed media. She loves classic cars, hot rods, customs, motorcycles, and her portfolio has something for every car and racing enthusiast out there. Her work has been featured worldwide in numerous publications, including The Rob Report and Hot Rod Magazine. And she is the head photographer for Danny Thompson, another guest here on Cars Yeah, and his Challenger 2. And she often shoots out at Bonneville and El Mirage Dry Lake. Holly, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a moment and share a little bit more about your history, your career, your interests, and of course your passion for all things automobile? Well, I can't remember a time in my life where there hasn't been cars or a pit crew or or some fun, fabulous toy in the garage. My dad and my uncles raced Baja in cool. the 70s and 80s. They won the 500 and the 1,000. Wow. So I spent a lot of time in the back of a station wagon pit crewing for the family. Sure. We grew up with dirt bikes. My grandfather raced sailboats. So it just... I can't tell you, I cannot remember a time where I haven't either been in a racing situation or, you know, throughout my life, my dad had some pretty incredible cars. I went to preschool in a Model T. Oh, my gosh. And <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, there was a very, you know, various um, brass era cars. We had an Auburn at one point in time. And nice. I was introduced at a very young age to the, the wonders of steam and steam engines and uh, we had steam toys when we were kids and my father did this really fabulous job of exposing me to all these different worlds and eras of cars and and you know from modern day off-road vehicles to brass era cars to classics what fun i can't remember a time not being around vehicles yeah it sounds like it when did your passion for photography and art start to come into your life? I was born with the whole passion for art. I come from a family of architects and artists, and uh, I can't ever remember not having a camera in my hand. Or And, and my, both my mother and my father encouraged me to draw, paint, take photographs. Uh, just grew up in a very art-related family. Oh, how fun. Oh, fantastic. I know in our pre-show chat, we talked a little bit about that. I grew up in a very similar family, so it's really fun to have parents that encourage that creative, artistic side in our lives. 
I would imagine all those years of going out to Baja and watching your family race and going to car events, you took a lot of pictures in your youth. Is that right? Not really. I I didn't. It, photography for me was a hobby that I I didn't really pursue when I was younger. Uh, I was more drawing and painting and mixed media and being creative in different ways. Mm-hmm. I used to shoot film in my 20s, and I really enjoyed that. But then the digital age kind of came came into play, and, and I stopped for a while doing, you know, art type of photography because I just kind of wanted to wait for the digital age to come through. Sure. And went back to painting and drawing for a number of years before I picked up camera again. Well, as we continue on your journey, I always like to start by asking my guests for a success quote, something that's been instrumental in their life, inspiring in their life. It's a really great way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars, yeah? So, Holly, take the wheel. This was a tough one because you said success quote, and I kept going back to, my father used to say, if your life is free of failures, you're not taking enough risks. Oh, I love that. (laughs) <laughs> That's wonderful. I've never found the true person who said that, but that has always been something that I've followed for a very long time because as an artist, as a race car driver, as a woman in the automotive industry, you can't expect to achieve anything without adventure and risking something. So that just all that made sense to me growing up and it made sense to me it makes sense to me now and and whenever I get the opportunity to go and do something different or race a new car or photograph a new vehicle to me that embodies that statement is about risk taking and same thing with my art I'm I, I'm not a trained I'm a self-taught photographer and I, I claim that I'm more an artist than a photographer and and I do some things that are very unconventional with my photography. I don't follow a lot of the rules. I break the rules. Good for you. (laughs) And that's where I'm comfortable. And that rule breaking has led to some really spectacular opportunities in my life and and some really uh, great photos that I'm very, very proud of. Well, you're very fortunate to have the father you, that you have to push you like that and help you realize that failures are okay. I spoke to a guest once who said, you know, when we fall down, we fall forward because when we get up, at least we're a little bit past where we were. So don't be afraid mm-hmm. of falling down. I thought that was a great way to explain failure as well. So fantastic. Would you share a story with me that instigated your passion for cars? You said you grew up in a family around cars. So I'm not sure if you can pinpoint that one moment in your life when you really knew you were a car gal, but can you think of what it might have been? Basically, my father taught me the appreciation of the automobile. And I had this extraordinary ability to see auto- the automobile as a piece of art. To me, every automobile made, race car, motorcycle, is a sculpture because it's one person's or a group vision of the way they think or want a vehicle, motorcycle, car to be perceived. Mm -hmm. So to me, it just made sense to take in an automobile as a piece of art Mm -hmm. uh, down to the tiniest of things, whether it's a modern-day race car like, like, for instance, the we'll get into this a little bit later, but I photograph and have been photographing Danny Thompson's Challenger too right. for about three years now, and the work that goes into that car and every little line and every little wire and the welds are just to me that's a beautiful, wonderful thing, and and it's a masterpiece. Yes. So vehicles to me are sculpture, they're art, our car people are all artists, Um, and that's how I see that, and I think my father is the one that really showed me the the beauty of what goes into the smallest of pieces on a vehicle, and then the vehicle as a whole. Oh, wonderful. 
In fact, my blog this week at carsyad.com, the title of it was Cars as Art, and I wrote a very similar story about that, that cars are a form of art and start as sculptures made out of clay and all the parts, so I understand completely. What I'd love to do now, Holly, is take a look at some of the roads you've driven down and crawl under the hood and ask you to share a huge challenge or even a great failure that you face in your career. You talked earlier about your father taught you not to be afraid of failure, so I'm sure this will be a pretty easy question for you to answer. But the most important part of this is how you overcame that challenge or failure and what you learned from it. The challenge would be uh, the most, the, the biggest one in my mind, which was the most recent, was Speed Week in 2014. Mm-hmm. I was there, of course, with my Challenger 2 crew and Danny in the car, and it rained. Yes. And it was, it was, the salt flats, unfortunately, were underwater. And I had to figure out a way to make the best of a really not great situation. Right. The fabulous part is, is Danny Thompson, who is the driver of Challenger 2, and just, he's an amazing, amazing man. He is the most driven man I have ever met. Mm-hmm. He is the most inspirational, one of the most inspirational people I've ever met. And he gave me full control over what I wanted to do for a photo shoot for the car. Nice. At the same time, we had to have the Challenger 2 in Salt Lake City at, I think, 4 or 5 o'clock that evening. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he and my amazing crew took Challenger 2 out to the uh, Land's Inn, which in Bonneville's Land's Inn is where the pavement ends and the salt begins. But mm-hmm. in this case, it was where the pavement ended and the, the water. water began. <laughs> yes, the water. <laughs> <laughs> And they, I, I instructed them how to set the car up. We had the sun rising in the background because it needed to get out there early as we didn't have a lot of time. And also dealing with quite a few people. There's a lot of people out there that were, you know, out there to look at the salt flats. And, and Challenger 2 draws a lot of attention when she's out there. Not, You know, she, she's a big, beautiful 419-mile-an-hour car. Yes. So they set it up for me. I arranged a photo shoot. Peter Vincent, another wonderful photographer who I think you've interviewed. Yes, is, yeah, Peter's been on the show. Me. Yep. And um, he's on my team as well. And I broke every rule in the book in terms of photography rules. <laughs> I <laughs> had the sun rising behind my subject. Yep. And um, I shoot a lot with natural light. I'm not a, I don't like flash. Mm-hmm. And... I was able to create a photograph that I saw in my head the day before, which personified this project and, and Danny and Challenger 2. And we shot with long shadows. And it was very important to me to have this photograph, you know, the, what I saw in my head. And, and I have Danny standing next to the car. And Danny's shadow is longer than the car. Oh, wow. And the car is 30, 32 yeah, feet long. Yeah, that is one long car, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. But I really wanted the world to see the power of this man and this vehicle. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, to show, I guess the shadows represent that Danny's shadow is bigger than his car shadow. And that represented to me the spirit and the drive and the determination wow. of wow. Danny. Wonderful. <laughs> and we had a great shoot, you know, Danny in the water with his uniform, pants rolled up. I don't know if you're familiar with the Challenger 2 story, but when the car went with Mickey in 1968, it rained. Yes, so. he shared that story. Mickey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had this extraordinary situation where it's history repeating itself, and And I wanted to make the most out of it. And the best part that came out of it was this photograph I saw in my head that I wanted to create, breaking all the rules. I got a phone call from David Kennedy, of editor-in-chief of Hot Rod, and he said, is that photograph spoken for? And I said, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. And he said, we want that photograph for January 2015 issue. And it's their centerfold for their... um, Wow. 
article on the Bonneville that wasn't what happens when you have to cancel the world's fastest race. Right. Yeah. He said that embodied the whole situation, and it gave a... He said that the car and Danny, unless you know who they are, provides a certain amount of anonymity. Otherwise, it just was very moving. It was a very moving photograph, and that, to me, was probably, you know, it's, it's one of those blessings in disguise. Sure, yeah. I love the way you took a tough situation and completely flipped it around. I love this story. Let's shift gears here and go to the other end of the spectrum. I'd love for you to share one of those aha moments you had in your career. One of those times when you realized that an idea or a concept really had some merit and was going to make it. And tell us the steps you took to turn that aha moment around into your success. I was really close to my dad. My dad passed away um, in 1999. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, he was always an inspiration. He, he taught me to drive steam cars. He, he did so much. And when I lost my father, I, I just, going to car functions and being around the car people, and, it, you know, it was different and mm-hmm. it was hard. When I picked up the camera again and really started photographing and deciding, okay, I'm, I'm going to go out and pursue a career in photography and art with my photographs. It just basically felt right. I didn't go to car functions for years with a camera. I finally decided I'm going to go to something with my camera. And the aha moment came when um, Danny Thompson contacted me and said, I want you to come down and photograph my car. Nice. And first of all, it was such an incredible honor because I'm a woman. And he said he really liked my work. Mm-hmm. And I showed up on that day, May 29th, 2012, to the shop, and he said, you know, I want you to give her a personality She had that people could understand, and it just felt right. It was wow. just like I had come home and, and been given this gift that, was so incredible to document the history of Danny and this quest. Mm-hmm. I just felt like I I was right at home again. Nice. And then <laughs> branching out a little bit, Grand National Roadster Show 2013, photographing a few cars there, and, and having builders come up to me and say, your photography is extraordinary. You see what I see when I'm building this car. Oh, wow. You see... The details, you see the work that I put into it. Mm -hmm. And having the builders tell me that was very important to me. Right. And then documenting Challenger 2 and her journey has has been absolutely incredible because I get to walk through history on this second generation of Thompson LSR racing. And I'm in the truck when, you know, or I was in the truck with Danny when we took that, the liner Challenger 2 onto the salt for the first time in 46 years. And I get to be there and document him doing that and the legacy of the Thompson family. Yes. And to me, that's a great honor. An incredible opportunity too. And to be, to be a woman too. And what I do is pretty, pretty amazing. How about proudest career moments? I would assume you probably had many, but is there one in particular that you'd share with us that really stands out? That one's hard because I've had a lot of really proud career moments. <laughs> it's difficult because it's, you know, again, it's it's really it's really Danny Thompson challenging to relate it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because of what I do with this project, I have gotten to spend so much time with, Icons of the automotive industry, Ed Iskandarian, Nick Arias, Gene Winfield, builders that are um, amazing, amazing people. And one of the projects that has come out of that it has been that I not only get to spend time with these gentlemen and listen to their stories, but they let me photograph them. And oh, it's resulted in one of my projects that I'm working on a book and a museum exhibit called Legends of Metal and Speed. And I'm probably going to collaborate with Peter Vincent on this. 
Oh, um, but nice. capturing the beauty of these people and their who they are now, and it's all black and white photography. Oh, cool! But I'm so honored because I get to be around so many different people. You know, George Callaway, who's an old land speed racer, and George Poteet, and so many who who have given to the sport, and in, you know, through art or through building or through driving. That's probably one of the proudest moments, or just just the whole experience. Right. Yeah. All icons and legends in their own right. So wonderful. Let's have a little bit of fun here. What was your first really special car? And if you could share a memory that you have with that vehicle. It wasn't mine. It was my father's. Uh -huh. And it's a 19, 1909 Model R Stanley Steamer Roadster. That is unique. Tell me a, a memory you have. My father took him 10 years to restore it. And it just my dad was teaching me and taught me how to drive. Taught me the appreciation of the power of fuel, fire, and water. Mm. And that is the car that is most precious to me, mm -hmm. was the car he restored. It wasn't my car, but I appreciated it so much mm -hmm. because it was such an incredible vehicle. There are so few of them. I, the part about that I love about that is, is, is my dad always said to me, you know, the steam car ran a, you know, it was record, land speed record holder in 1906 or 1907, I think it was, 1906. The Stanley Brothers built this car, and it ran 127 miles an hour and change, and <laughs> it only weighed like 500 pounds. And so yeah. it was really interesting to, to know and, and to have that whole connection with the power of steam. And so I just was in love with my dad's steam car. Still I am. So I'm, I, I'm still in love with steam cars. I love steam. All right, Holly, how about seller's remorse? Is there a vehicle that you've had in your life that you let go that you really wish you could have back? Yes. 1953 Cadillac Eldorado 50th, Cadillac 50th anniversary car. Oh, wow. Okay. And what was it about that car you love so much? I just love the line. Uh -huh. It was convertible. It was a big cruising car. It, it it needed restoration. I love the covered fenders in the back and and just it's the that look of mm -hmm. that Eldorado, the big the big ship. Oh yeah. I, I don't know why it's always appealed to me. It's not a race car and it's not a brass era car, but that's yeah. probably that's the car that I regret. All right. Well, sorry to bring that up, but I ask everybody that's that okay. question. So we all have right. we all have one of those bare spots in our garage. We wish we could refill. How about current projects? Is there something you're working on right now that really has you excited and fired up? Well, yeah, I'm I'm working on a couple of books. My Legends of Metal and Speed book, right. uh -huh. which is going to be all, all of my books are going to be car people type books with very few words. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to adhere to the forty thousand word book publishing requirement. <laughs> Good for you, because I know I don't want to read. All of it. If I want to read about it, I'll I'll look it up. But yep. um, I want to look at pictures. Yeah. So I'm working on the Legends of Metal and Speed book. I'm working on my current project, which is Challenger Two. There will be a, a wonderful book about the history of Challenger Two and Danny Thompson's quest for the land speed record. That project is just near and dear, and and the preservation of Mickey Thompson and what he brought to uh, the automotive world is very important to me. Sure. I'm really focused on the Challenger 2 aspect of this, but I think it's, it's important to document history today in a, an actual physical book mm -hmm. because everything is online or everything is digital, and I feel like we're losing books. And we're losing people, too. These innovative, incredible people that have done so much to for the world of racing and automobiles and custom cars and land speed. And, you know, we need to, to preserve the history of these people and document their photographs. A lot of people want to see the old photographs of, mm -hmm. of, from, you know, of these people. And I want to capture them 
as they are right now and in still, you know, still doing what they love to do. Sure. Edith Gendarian is a fabulous example of somebody who's 93 years old and he goes somewhere every day of the week. He goes to work. And then on the weekends, he goes to car shows. He is out and about, and he is one of the most happy, amazing, incredibly intelligent men I've ever encountered in my life. And just always smiling, of course, with a cigar. He shows <laughs> up to he shows up to El Mirage when we're racing. He's just very he's just this great guy, and he doesn't stop. Wonderful. <laughs> the secret to a long, happy life for sure. Don't stop. Yes. <laughs> Yes, now, yes, never stop. Now, here's a very introspective question for you, Holly. If you were a car, what kind of car would you be and why? Um, that's a good good question, and it's a really <laughs> tough question. <laughs> I, I don't know. That one, I, that one I read, and I just couldn't tell you what kind of car I'd be because there's way too many cars that I like and that I that I appreciate. It's not so much about the car you like. It's more about how you perceive and see yourself. It's funny. How do I perceive myself? Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to tell you. I, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is, um, and this may sound silly, but I want to be, let's say, what's, uh, what's currently one of the most expensive cars in the world? I believe it's oh, one of a kind Bugatti. Probably the Bugatti Veyron, the La Ferrari, yeah. the Porsche 918 Spider. Yeah, I think it's so. It's basically the one of a kind Bugatti. There's an there's a there's an old Bugatti that that exists that's basically one of a kind, and it's worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. So let's pick a pick one that's worth millions and millions and millions <laughs> of dollars. Oh gosh! Now, now you're gonna understand where I'm going with this. So let's pick a car that's worth millions of dollars. Well, most recently with the auctions would be a Ferrari GTO. Okay. I want to be a Ferrari GTO so that I can sell myself and take the money and put it into the Challenger 2 project so that we can go back to the salt oh, and go get that okay. plant speed record. There you go. I love that. <laughs> now there's a nice answer. Completely unselfish. Always giving. Great, Holly. Fantastic. I love that. <laughs> well, Holly, up next is the last lap. But before we put the pedal to the metal, here's a little something for the Cars Yeah listeners. Do you love vintage cars? Then go to CarsYeah.com and get a free copy of the fantastic Filler Up book. It's a full-color ebook filled with fuel filler fun with over 60 color photographs of vintage cars plus inspirational quotes from some of the most famous automotive enthusiasts of all time. Simply go to CarsYad.com and click on the free book button on the homepage. Download your free filler-up book today at Cars Yeah. All right, Holly, we're back and we're entering the last lap. And this is where I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some real quick blips of the throttle answers. So are you ready? Yes. Okay. What is the best automotive advice you've ever received? There's three things that come to mind. Cool. One was from my father. Listen to the car. Oh. Listen to it when you're driving it. Yep. Whether it, every vehicle listen, hear, and feel. Yep. The next two come from Danny Johnson. Nice. And this this applies to my racing because I my land speed racing. He says keep your hands soft and above all stand on the gas. <laughs> yes, I remember him saying that. Can you share one of your personal habits that you believe has contributed to your success? You know, I wake up every morning and I just sit there and say, life is an adventure and, and the world is a beautiful place. And I am so fortunate to get to do what I do for a living and be in the world I am in. And I'm so appreciative of those people around me. Mm. And I think if you, have, if you have a really good positive attitude and your glass is always half full, that's the best thing you can do for every aspect of your life, for yeah. your art, for your daily living, for your health. And I just look at the world as being a really wonderful, positive place to be in. And I'm really thankful for what I get to do. Fantastic. How about resources? I know there are so many today with the websites out there, but is there one in particular that you think our listeners would really benefit going to? Maybe it's a website, maybe it's a blog that you get. It's not necessarily a resource. I feel that the most inspiration 
And the most valuable thing to me right now in terms of my career and my photography is the crew of the Challenger 2 and Danny Thompson and the people I get to work with on that crew. Mm, fantastic. Uh, they're just, they're incredible and they're inspirational. And that's been one of the greatest things I've encountered in my life. Wonderful. Would you share a book with our listeners? I know there are many books out there that are great, but one in particular that you think the Cars Yow listeners would really enjoy? Anything by Peter Vincent, photographer. <laughs> yes, and I mentioned earlier, Peter's been a guest on the show. His work is just spectacular, and I'm fortunate enough to have, I think I have all of his books, actually, but uh, they're, just, they're just a joy to look at. So uh, great reference there. And I'll remind our listeners that you can find links to all these great resources at carsyacom slash Holly Martin. All right, Holly, we're up to the checkered flag. And this last question can be a real doozy for some people. If you could have only one collector car in your garage, but this is something that you can't sell to buy a bunch of other cars with or give the money to Danny to <laughs> continue his project. But money's no object. Today, I'll buy you whatever you'd like. What would that one vehicle be and why? This is a tough one because I have two. I'm sorry. You can't pick two. If I let you I pick know. two, then I've got to let everybody pick two. And I've made it through 198 interviews without cheating on that rule of mine. So you're going to have to, you can tell me what they both are, but you have to pick just one. Okay. All right. Well, of course, one one of them is the 1953 Cadillac Eldorado. Okay. Convertible. Cool. Which is a more realistic car. Sure. But truly, it would be a 1909 Model R Stanley Steamer Roadster. I kind of thought you'd say that. <laughs> and is that because of the history you have with that vehicle with your father? Yes. Yeah. And I get to drive... Lauren Birch is 1910 all the time. He's fabulous. He's a friend of my dad's, and he just so graciously lets me drive that car. Oh, wow. All the time to the different horseless carriages club events in Southern California. So, um, Very but cool. realistically, a steam car takes a lot more maintenance oh, to yeah. work on. Yeah. So, well, you know, one collector car, I think you picked a pretty cool car, a pretty darn rare. Very unique, and the fact that uh, you know how to operate that vehicle makes it even more special. So, because not just Thank anybody you. can jump in those cars and drive them, it takes some takes a bit of training, I think. Holly, you've taken me on a great ride today, and I've really enjoyed your stories and spending some time with you. And I want to thank you for sharing your journey with me and the Cars Yow listener. If you could give us one parting piece of guidance before you drive off into the sunset in that Stanley Steamer, what would it be? Don't ever be afraid to live your life because you may not get an opportunity again or a chance again to, to do something really amazing that will impact your life for, for the better. There you go. Wonderful advice. And what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you and see the work that you're doing? My website, www.metalandspeed.com or hollymartin.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Tumblr and all that social media stuff. All those connections are on metalandspeed.com. Great. And that's, that's it. That's basically it. That's how you find me. Well, listeners, again, you can find links to all of these resources at carsyad.com slash Holly Martin. Just put Holly in the search box. She's the only Holly to appear here on Cars Yeah, so her show notes page will pop right up. And you can find links to everything. And I encourage you to visit her website and look at the photography, look at the the scope and breadth of work she's doing. It's absolutely fantastic, beautiful. And I can't wait for your books to come out. We'll all be looking for those. And when they do, let me know and we'll put links on your show notes page so people can access and purchase those books as well. Holly, thank you for being so generous with your time and expertise and for sharing your experience with our listeners. Until we talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.